Okay, guys, I haven't been around. I haven't had anything interesting to show you guys in a while. So, finally getting back in gear. Slow and painful. And uh, these are the L29s. They're actually uh, pretty much all brought up to where I think I want them. Uh, can't put them on and off the bench because I can't lift the damn things right now. But I'm getting everything set up. And it was funny because the way this was originally done, it was very, very tight and it had a sharp edge here. So I wanted to round it just a little bit, give it a little bit easier entrance into the port. And then when I did it, this side was still really tight to the valve. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to do a, a light plunge cut and then re-radius this and have a little bit easier transition into that port where the valve is. Well, when I did that, it turned out fine. Let me add some light to this. I can't see anything. Okay, that's better, but not enough. Let's add some more light. Okay, you can see where it just touches the chamber. It just touches the chamber, and you have, a, you have to have a nice top cut. The top cut on this was awful because it was it was a huge section where it went down about fifty thousandths. Okay, tons of sharp edges around this. We have to eliminate all that. Okay, just uh, you can see I did my usual work. Now these I still have to hone the guides and I have to touch the valve job because it's not good enough. Uh, Basically, what I did so far was I put a, a deep 60 in it because the 45 was huge, and then I radiused it into the port and did my, my magic in the port. But it was funny the way I... I the real reason I'm, I'm showing you this tonight is I did this little plunge cut, right? And I kind of like doing a plunge cut because you can see how far off the chambers are from one to the other. And... Pretty much they're always off a little bit, but these are impressive. Now somebody's going to say when you do a plunge cut, okay, you're taking you're taking a stone and you're running it down. Yeah, my hands are. It's let, this is this work is slightly dirtier than uh, digging coal, I think. When you plunge cut it, your your stone is going to get a slight amount of wear. Okay, I understand that. You have to really stay up on it, and chances are, when you're doing something like this, you may go through a couple stones, and you kind of you really got to watch how big in diameter your stone is, because if it rattles, it's going to eat that stone right up. So I use a speed controller, and I change the speed quite a bit, make it much much slower. Now, as we scroll down, you'll see how much difference we have. From this chamber, all right? Didn't didn't touch this at all. I mean, looks like we got a little a little tiny bit right there. I'm gonna pause it, move the light, and show you the next one. Okay, not bad. Pretty much the same thing, right? Just a little, just a nibble on the chamber, and you take your your metal off this side, and you'll be able to do the same thing. Okay. Check out the next one. Ouch. Look at that chunk of the chamber. That was... We didn't have that here. It just touched the chamber. Okay. That's how much further over this one was. All right, the chamber is actually over. And when you do a plunge cut like this, I like it because it, it does equalize the chambers a little bit, which is nice. Now this is going to be a hot street setup for a big block Chevy, and uh, I definitely want I want this. Now these are much smaller exhaust ports, so I really want to get nice flow out of them for what they are, and I think we're going to get there. Um, hopefully, keep my fingers crossed. I'll be able to actually do a flow test on these. These have not been flowed since the first flow test, and. Uh, I mentioned that I thought they flowed a lot for what they were, and Stan Weiss <laughs> threw a bunch of uh, flow numbers at 
at me saying, Charlie, they don't look right. I did take the bench down. It was it was a few CFM high on one setting, but uh, that's been all calibrated up. I have to change it every between seasons anyway, so it's not wasn't that big a deal. So the original flow numbers you had of this when they were untouched are a touch high, but it doesn't matter. We're going to do way better than that. Okay, and our last one. You can actually see where I haven't even taken the last stone all the way down yet because it's this much of the chamber. Now, somebody's going to say, oh, you screwed that up. I measured. This wall to the edge of the valve is within a few thousandths of the one all the way to the right. So, just an interesting little video to show you what you can do with stones. I might as well show you the uh, the profiles that I used for the stones. Now, I used this one as my first cut. It's basically straight. You can see I put a notch in it, which is a new idea I just had tonight. Put a notch in it with a half round file so it cleans the uh, metal and grit out a little bit better. It seems to really like it. Someone's going to say, does it matter which way you put that cut? Now, one way it'll throw the dirt up, the other way it'll throw the, the dirt down. It's not that big a deal. Then, this is the the stone that has the angle that I want for the very top cut, which is a little on the shallow side. Okay? We want it a little shallow, and then we want to hit the 30, and then the 45, and then the 60, and then radius in. It's actually, the radius goes right into the 60. So, this stone is designed with that profile that I have. you got to shape it the way you want to, and I shape it with another stone. It's something that you have to watch from port to port, make sure you get them all as close as possible. I mean, is it the end of the world if they're a tiny bit off? I'm going to go over this with a burr anyway. And the last one is a touch bigger, has the same angle as as the last stone. The radius may be close. It, it's going to be tough to get them perfect, but we're just using this part. You can see this stone actually rattled. You can see the white spots. That's where it rattled. And as soon as it rattles, it takes some metal right off. So you really have to go easy. I've actually in certain instances, I've uh, put a little, little of my coupling agent on uh, on here, uh, which is nothing more than hair gel we get at Walmart, and that gives it enough enough lubricity that it doesn't bind as much. Just a little a little something on some Sue stones. And the L29s, I hope to have some cool stuff coming up soon. Actually, I got a really cool project coming up. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about this. Uh, if you don't know who Just Mopar Joe is, take a look at him. He's got a really good channel. He does uh, strictly Mopar stuff, it looks like. Big block stuff, too. A lot of big block stuff. And... His latest is he's building between a 535 and a 540, 440 Chrysler. And uh, the guy that's building it says, uh, who, who can I send these heads to? Just Mopar Joe used my name. The guy gave me a call and we're in on the project. So I can't thank Just Mopar Joe enough. Uh, glad to be part of the project. It's going to be really cool. I told the customer, I said, uh, I have exactly zero big block Chrysler experience. Never had a set of big block Chrysler heads in my hands. These are kind of nice because we're starting with Trick Flow 270s. And if you take a good look at uh, what those are on... Uh, their website, they're probably not nearly big enough for a 535, 
535 or a 540. Now it wants to be uh, drive and drag, I think he said, which is uh, a newer term. I, I'm old school. I don't, I don't know what that means. Sounds like he wants to be able to drive it around and then hit the strip and make everybody cry, which I understand. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be quite a radical piece for driving around the street, but it does have a lot of cubes, so that kind of mellows it out. Uh, he already has the single plane. I told him I wanted to do the single plane, too, because I really thought that would be a restriction. It's a very low single plane M1 something or other. We'll get him. We'll get him, and uh, he already ordered the valves. He ordered the Ferreira valves that I asked him to get, and all this is uh, coming our way soon. So... Just to show you some Sioux stuff and uh, heads up on some new project. I haven't done anything on the uh, DV Echo Boost project because I can't get them on the phone. So I hope everything is okay down there. And uh, if anyone from the DV clan talks to him, just tell him I need to talk to him because uh, I am at an impasse. I can't do anything else till I get some parts for these... Uh, Echo Boost heads. All right, guys. Overall, things have been pretty good. Back to work two weeks already. Oof. Summertime in Florida. Ouch. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.